Let's talk about the change in internal energy, and we'll also do an example using the first law of thermodynamics. And I like this in here, my coffee's too hot, and now it's too cold. <laughs> All right, let's uh, remind ourselves, what is the first law of thermodynamics again? Remember, it goes like this. It goes Q equals delta U plus W. This is important because this first law has a delta U term. So that means we can actually go a little bit further and figure out, well, what is that change in internal energy? We have an equation for it, actually. So it goes like this. It goes delta U equals, it goes 3 halves NR delta T. There's also a version that goes like this. It goes delta U equals, and it's, uh, again, 3 halves, except this time it's N times KB with this little uh, lowercase b here, also still delta t. Both of these, data booklet. Now let's not forget what everything means. So delta u, remember, is the change in internal energy that's measured in joules. We got delta t, the change in temperature. If you're being really careful, uh, you should always use Kelvin. However, uh, because it's a change in temperature, you could technically use uh, Celsius here. And lowercase n is the number of moles. R is the gas constant. You just looked that up. It's 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. We've got capital N, which is a number of molecules or atoms. And we've got K subscript B here is a Boltzmann's constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. Now, there's something else you could use if you wanted to, I guess. You could actually say, hey, that means that N times R, notice this right here, this N R right here, is going to be the same thing as this N K B like this. And that's because, uh, well, if you look at the rest of the equation, it's the same. So in case that would help you, don't forget that this right here would also stem from this as well. So I guess you can use that if you want. So let's do an example. So here we've got an ideal gas, and it undergoes an isovolumetric change, AB, as shown. Remember what isovolumetric means? It means the volume doesn't change. So here it just goes straight down in pressure, but the volume stays the same. And it tells us at A, by the way, the pressure of the gas. We know that number. We know the volume of the gas here. And we know the temperature of the gas here. And at B, we're only told the temperature. And the question is, what is the thermal energy removed by going from A to B? So what do we mean by this? I mean, what is thermal energy removed? What we mean here, this right here, this implies we're looking for a Q value, and we expect it to be negative because it's removed. So we're kind of already giving ourselves the hint there that we need to find a Q value. You know, that's the thermal energy, um, and it's going to be probably negative. Well, I thought in order to solve this, it might help just to start with a uh, first step here. We actually, well, we want to find Q. Okay, so how can we find Q? Well, let's just use the first law of thermodynamics. And that one just goes Q equals delta U plus W. Now, it's important to remember what we can do here because because um, this one here, work done, right here, this W, that is always the area under the graph. Remember that. Well, because of that, then, uh, it's because it's the area under the PV graph, I mean, uh, this is going to be zero because, you know, the area is zero. Another way, by the way, to look at it would have been to say, hey, look at, let's look at this equation for work, and work is P times delta V. Another way to say it is, hey, delta V is zero, isn't it? So because that's zero, so is that. So what this really means is that the work right here is going to be zero, and therefore we can conclude something really important. We can conclude then that Q, which is what we're looking for here, this thermal energy removed, is going to be just, well, W is zero, means it must be just delta U. In other words, a change in internal energy. So long as we can find this right here, we're going to be fine. So okay, let's go and try to find out then what is the change in internal energy. Well, it might help to just use our equation that we've just been learning about. So let's see here. Delta U equals well, 3 halves N times R times delta T. Now that means that we need to figure out the change in internal energy in going from A to B here. Well, it's going to be related to the change in temperature. And we do know the change in temperature, don't we? We know A, and we know, like, we know the temperature at A, it's this, 612. We know the temperature at B, it's uh, 386, so we're okay there. But we do need to know NR together here, and that's the thing that we don't know. Do you see this one here? We don't know this. We need this. So because of that, we have to be a little bit clever about it. Like, how are we going to find NR? I mean, we know what R is, but how do we know what N is? We don't know the number of moles they didn't tell us. But they did give us a hint, you see. 
So I think that the, the part that's not super obvious is let's use the fact that, um, let's see, let's use that PV equals NRT. We have that equation from before as well. And what does that mean? That means we can isolate for NR. Do you see that? So we can say, hey, that means that NR is just going to be equal to, let's see, it's going to be P times V divided by T. So I'll say that's so a P times V over T. Well, that means if we know P and V and T at a certain point, that's going to be constant no matter what. And we do know it. Look, we know it at A. So do you see what we're going to do here? We're going to say, so we do know that N times R is going to be equal to P A V A over T A. So that's going to be a piece right here then that we're going to put in here. So this piece right here, that is going to go into here like this. And therefore, we're pretty much uh, ready now. We can say so, delta u then is going to be equal to, well, it's going to be, uh, and remember, delta u, the whole point of doing this is to find out q, actually. So maybe I'll say so q, which equals delta u, which is going to be equal to, let's see, 3 halves, and I'll just write everything down. Now, instead of nr, what do I put in? I put in, oh yeah, pa va over ta. Okay, and then I, of course, have to do the change in temperature. So the change in temperature is going to be the temperature at B minus the temperature at A. Well, then I just have to put in all the numbers. So let's see here. I have three halves here times, and let's see, what's the pressure at A? It's 4 times 10 to the 6. Okay, what's that? That's times uh, the volume at A. I know that. It's 1.5. Oops, I'll better write it nicer here. Times 10 to the minus 4, and nothing weird about the units. We're okay there. Divide that whole thing by, let's see, it's temperature at A, which is 612 Kelvin. And that whole thing is times, uh, let's see, temperature at B, which is 386, all that minus 612. Phew. We need a calculator for this. So I'll just open up my old good old calculator friend, and let's just do this whole thing here. So I'm going to do 3 over 2, all that times, let's see here, I'll do uh, one big bracket here, and I'll do this as a fraction as well, and I'll say 4 times 10 to the 6, all that times uh, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. On the bottom, I'll say 612, and on the right here, I'll say all this times, in brackets, uh, 386 minus 612. And I expect to get a negative, which I do. I get negative 332.3529. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, I can use three significant figures everywhere. Do you notice there's three here, three here, and three here? So I'll do this whole thing to three significant figures. So I'll say Q equals negative. It'll be 332, let's just say. So it'll be 332. Units, of course, are joules. And there we go, we've got our final answer. This is the thermal energy that's been removed, because remember Q was equal to delta U, which was then this. Okay, so if we remember our Clausius conventions, the fact that Q is negative tells us that thermal energy, or heat, has been transferred from the system to the surroundings. There we go.